retired. I'm a retired teacher. I taught uh, for 36 years and 31 at Atascadero High School. And I'm also a small business owner. I own a small laundromat in Atascadero. And uh, I don't know what else to tell you. I stay involved with the community as much as I can. Why do you think you would make a good mayor for the city of Atascadero? Well, the fact that uh, there are a lot of people who do know me, and I've worked with a lot of different groups of people in different organizations. And uh, when they need help, they know they can count on me. If I say I'm going to show up, I show up. And, and, and if I'm not in charge, I'll do whatever they want me to do. So that's kind of, I'm the same way as being mayor. I think I can bring people together to hope solve problems and work together. We have a country that's been, that's very split right now, very divided. And I don't want to see our community be the same way. So I'd like to bring people together that we can work on issues that are really important to the people of this community. Not the world, not the nation, not the state, but this community. What are some of the biggest issues that you think the city currently is facing and dealing with? Well, it's a kind of a combination of things. Um, one of the biggest issues deals with the homeless. And that's tied in with the police in the sense that the homeless, there's two different types. There's the homeless people who have the problems with maybe mental problems and you'll have the transients. And the ones that have the mental problems, it's hard for the police to deal with that because they're not trained to deal with people who have those mental problems. And we used to have a resource officer who would work with the police, but that is no longer available. And we need to somehow bring in the uh, mental health community, whether it's transition mental health or the county mental health, to help Atascadero and maybe their surrounding areas to deal with those people who have those mental problems that are homeless, not because of choice, but because of mental problems. And uh, the second and the other part of it is that the Atascadero Police Department has remained the same size in terms of numbers of officers since it was inception in 1979. And it hasn't changed, and yet we've doubled in population, and everybody's expecting them to do their job. Kind of hard when you only have three guys per shift. And so that's kind of tied in with the mental health situation in terms of the homeless, because how can they do their job when there's not enough people and they're not really trained for that? So that's right. tied in together. And then when you have the police having to worry about that, how can they help in terms of the small businesses that have problems with, if, you know, with a robbery or whatever? break-ins and well if they're tied up with something else how can they deal with the homeless and vice versa so uh it's kind of a big thing there and i think once we can solve that problem at least or minimize the homelessness and uh, that kind of thing we're going to be a lot better then i think more and more businesses want to come to atascadero and start something here in terms of uh, uh helping the community and its economic growth and do you think that people um are less likely to come to Atascadero to move to it, to start their business because of those, those issues you mentioned? Is that something you, you're kind of getting at? Well, uh, yes and no. I mean, I think that that is part of the problem, but the other part is that I think before even the COVID came about, Atascadero has been noted as a, an area where businesses come in and they don't stay very long for whatever reason that they, they don't stay here. And the ones that do are feeling the crunch of the COVID and so forth. And we'd like to bring more people back into Atascadero, but it's hard when it's very expensive for one to live in this county, the home prices, and there aren't that many jobs available for young people who are finishing high school and college. And they can't afford to live here. And it's really tough to live here and then try to raise kids and it's, it's all combined together, it really is. Going back to homelessness too, I know Echo Homeless Shelter is up in North County. Uh -huh. um, what about in terms of that? Do you think that that is helping the community a little bit more when it comes to homelessness and getting people off the street and having a place where they can go? They do, I mean, they do a great job at Echo, they really do, and, and uh, I know that PASS is, is gonna try to start something like that, but I think the biggest problem is that they can only take in so many people. Mm -hmm. And some of those people, there's, there's certain restrictions. They can't be taking drugs and they can't be doing this and they can't have a felony. Those are things that keep some people out. And those same people are still on the streets. And where do you put them? Mm -hmm. And the fact that we don't have any mental institutions like we used to have before the 80s, well, there's nowhere for these people to go. And, and ECHO has done a wonderful job feeding them and clothing them and housing them, but they're only stay, stay there some, a limited time. 
Mm -hmm. And so uh, it's, it's, it's an ongoing situation. I think every community has this problem. What about talking about COVID-19, how it's impacted every community, but your community specifically, I'm sure businesses have really been impacted. Can you name off some ways that you would help businesses kind of rebound after COVID and, you know, if, they're, if they lost their footing a little bit because of COVID-19? How, how do you kind of help the community? Well, some of those are really tough, especially like businesses where you have to walk in and, you know, you got to wear a mask. That's the main thing. I think people need to wear their mask, whether mainly inside. Outside is not a problem too much, mainly because you got the wind blowing and so forth. But the restaurants have a tougher time and they're starting to have uh, tables outside their restaurants, which I think is a good idea. And uh, if they can be allowed to come inside with people wearing their masks and separate the tables, that would be good. But it's a, it's a real tough situation for both restaurants and salons and uh, businesses that sell retail. It's very difficult because they can only allow so many people even come in. And that makes it difficult for um, uh, trying to sell any kind of product or people to browse around like they used to in shops. So it's a, it's a tough one everywhere. It really is. How do you maintain that infrastructure and make sure that those don't deteriorate over time and that citizens ultimately can be happy with the roads that they're driving on and the tax dollars that they're using to maintain those roads? Yeah, I know a lot of people have asked me about that. You know, we paid taxes. Where's this money going to? My road hasn't been fixed in 20 years. And I go, you know, that's a good question. That's something that I would like to find out if I become on the council and try to at least get an answer for those residents. Because I don't blame, I've been on some of the roads and they're horrible. You're driving around like you're trying to dodge potholes and <laughs> that's not fair to the residents. But at the same time, some of those streets might be county maintained. And if they're county maintained, why aren't, why haven't they been approved? You would right. think we pay county taxes as well as city taxes. Mm -hmm. Well, where's that money going? But uh, it, it's a tough one. It really is. And we have a lot of roads that they've done a good job of fixing, but I've been a lot of them where they had potholes like crazy. Yeah. What should they expect if you are elected mayor as far as you being um, someone who is a de dependent political figure in their community that will continue to provide and really steer the community in, in the direction they want to go in? Well, I think the main thing is, uh, Brooke, is that people know that when they have an issue, they can come to me and I'll listen. I may not solve the problem, but I'll work on it so that we can find a solution. It may not satisfy everybody like all solutions, but at least we can head in a direction where I'm hoping people throughout Atascadero will bring their concerns to the city council, not just to me, but city council and air them. And then we try to use that information to come to a reasonable uh, conclusion. That's an expectation that people want. If, they don't, if they're not heard, then they're going, wait, why am I even going to the meetings if nobody's paying attention? So. That's kind of what I think I like to bring to the table. Do you think that the current mayor has been upholding her end of the bargain? And do you think that you can do a better job than she can? Well, I don't know. I don't want to be critical of anybody, but I just think that uh, enough people in this community know me and they know they can approach me. That's the main thing. That's where I'm coming from, that they know they can approach me and I'll listen and, and uh, I'll try to give them the best uh, possible uh, answer I can based on the facts that I have. And I want to make sure that people realize that I want to, I want our city council to be transparent. So when people come to us, they say, Hey, what about this? We haven't heard about this. Okay. Well, here's the situation or get involved with the city, whether it's the planning commission, recreation commission, whatever, get involved, volunteer, help out, and then you'll find out more and more and hopefully help us solve some of the problems we have.